It's 2021. It's time to update my old gaming setup video. Let's do it. Hello there and welcome to the channel today. I am very excited about this video. It's a video I look forward to doing. Anytime I get to do a video of this style, I didn't think I'd get to actually do uh, a video in 2021 considering the 2020 version of my gaming setup and streaming setup video I made. I thought that was pretty advanced and that it was, you know, gonna last me a little while, but here I am in January 2021 filming a new one! So as I said, I'm really excited about this because I get to get really creative with filming and I get to go full deep dive into specs and about everything and answer any questions that I get commonly in my chat uh, and, you know, online and generally uh, about my setup equipment. So uh, let's dive straight in, hey? So this video, I'm gonna aim to do my best to break down each part of the setup and the room, focusing primarily on the desk. There'll be a bit on the end that's attached uh, to do with this side of my room and all the knickknacks and stuff, but I'm focusing primarily what's on the desk and what I use when I'm streaming, gaming, etc. Anything you see in this video is used by me daily in my daily life and in my streaming life, which by the way, if you haven't already, hop into my Twitch chat. I stream five nights a week over on Twitch playing all sorts of games and just chatting and all sorts of great stuff. Uh, so come and hang out and maybe get to ask me a question about my setup in real time as well. So this has taken me years. I started streaming, for those that don't know, back in late 2015 after I made an account in 2014 on Twitch. I discovered Twitch in uh, mid-2014 and spent a year kind of just browsing the site, browsing the platform, just seeing what I liked about it, what I didn't, you know, and that kind of thing. And then eventually worked up the courage to stream off of my PlayStation 4 in 2015 in about October or thereabouts. At that point in time, I was streaming solely off of my PlayStation 4 with my headphones, no webcam, uh, and I think I had my chat up on either my phone or maybe my laptop. I don't know if I had my laptop at that point in time though. Within a year, you would have seen probably this photo uh, in the last setup video. I moved to this setup uh, that you're seeing on screen now, uh, which was an old desk chucked into the same corner that the current desk is in, and with a laptop and a monitor, and we were done. And that was my setup, basically. And then I upgraded to using a webcam, and then in 2017, I upgraded to a first computer, and then, bing, bang, boom, here we are. It's quite amazing looking back on it, like seeing where I was at one point in time to where I am today, because I think a lot of us, we face especially streamers and creators, especially we face a lot of burnout and, you know, mental health problems and things like that where we're just, you know, we hate what we do or some things or, you know, we get sad about it or something sometimes. But when you do things like this and where you see where you've come from to where you are now, it really does a good thing of putting it in perspective and go, hey, you know, you're not doing half bad. But my setup's been a couple of years in the making, as you could probably tell. Uh, it's not been an overnight thing. It's probably not finished. There's probably elements and bits and pieces that I'd like to do, such as probably tidy up my cable management a little bit better, but hey, you know, not perfect around here. <laughs> but before I dive deeply into everything, I have to give a bit of a special shout out uh, to some lovely folks who've helped make my setup possible today. First and foremost, we have to thank my lovely partners at Alienware Oz. Uh, they've been working with me since uh, early 2019 and uh, still to this day, and I'm forever grateful for them. They've helped me do some incredible content and make some incredible moments using some incredible equipment that's sitting right next to me here and some incredible equipment that you're going to get to see throughout this video. I also have to give a special shout out to Elgato Gaming as well. Did some sponsored stuff with them uh, not so long ago uh, with the, their cam link. Uh, thanks so much to them for providing that part of my uh, setup. 
So let's not prolong this any further and let's actually start and get in to the uh, teardown, I guess, of my uh, setup. So of course we're going to start with the desk. The where else would a gaming setup video start? I don't know where else it'd start at. My desk is my central working and gaming and casual hub where I'm spending Gosh, I don't know. I wouldn't actually know how long I'm actually spending at my desk. Probably eight, nine, maybe ten hours a day at my desk uh, on any given day, working on content, playing games, uh, you know, learning about the industry and social media, uh, or doing classwork even because, you know, I like to take on a lot of things. So this setup at the moment now, contrasted with the one that I had uh, 12 months ago, uh, is a lot more ergonomically friendly for myself and is more of a workspace that is comfortable and feels like home uh, at the same time. And that's what I wanted to go for when I was keeping this in mind. The decision with the desk, the decision with the monitors, placements, the chair, and so on and so forth. So let's first and foremost talk about the computer on the desk. Because obviously that's, you know, the central thing I think a lot of people want in gaming setups to find out. And that's the computer. My computer is the Alienware Aurora R11 uh, in the Lunar Light color, which is their white model. They do have a black option called Dark Side of the Moon, but personally wasn't much of a fan of white peripherals before but now having owned white peripherals in a PC and a laptop now I'm very much interested in them. The computer is fully specced out with an i7-10700F processor, RTX 2080 Ti and so much more. I'll have all of the rest of the specs linked in the description below uh, for further details. I haven't had this computer too long at this point in time of filming this. I've had it for probably about six or seven months now, uh, which is not as long as I had the previous computer when I uh, recorded my last setup video, but I've only had it for a little while, but I'm absolutely in love with it It's by far my best performing PC that I've had I can enjoy games such as cyberpunk albeit glitchy and problematic and other you know phenomenal story games that were to be enjoyed this year, you know and Graphic intense games that I couldn't potentially run before on my computers at crystal clear quality and stream them at the same time and record them or whatever at the same exact time and I just absolutely love that. My favorite thing personally about this computer is that it's specced out to the max but it's not taking up a giant chunk of space on my desk. That's something that's very important to me when I'm you know, buying peripherals, upgrading equipment, that it's not too chunky, it's not too big. Equipment and items I like for them to be smaller, to be, you know, minimal, to not take up a ton of space on my desk, but get the job done at the same time because I like having space on my desk because my desk is rather large and I'd like to enjoy that space. I don't want my desk being cluttered 24 seven in peripherals and items and anything of that nature that I need to be streaming with. And with a tiny PC like this, it's phenomenal. I'm sure there are some of you that are probably wondering about fan noise, heat and temps and things like that. Don't you worry, I got you covered. Obviously I've had this computer for a couple of months so I've got a decent idea as to how it performs. Fans are pretty quiet and so are temps. Temps aren't too bad. Uh, nothing too much to be worried about or anything like that. You know, just your normal average everyday computer. Next up, let's talk about monitors. And all three of my monitors, once again, are Alienware branded monitors with the one in the middle being the Alienware 27 inch monitor, the brand new one, uh, along with the one on the right being also the same Alienware 27 inch. However, it is just tipped vertical on my monitor mount. So that way I have a dedicated monitor for my Twitch chat. I'll link the video up above in the card and in the description down below right now uh, to the monitor video that I did talking about vertical monitors, uh, where I discuss vertical monitors and what the pros and the cons are of using vertical monitors. And then of course, you have to talk about the left side and you have to talk about the Alienware ultra wide monitor. It is a 34 inch ultra wide monitor and it's an absolutely beautiful monitor uh, an ultra wide monitor is something that is very integral in my setup because obviously as a streamer I need a lot of real estate space on my screens to be able to see everything that's happening uh, with my streams with my games my computer at any given time during my live streams and that monitor allows me to just see everything that I need and manage everything beautifully without having to worry too much it's not in my face distracting me while I'm streaming but it's there if I need to see it. 
The monitors are beautiful and just fantastic and incredible color and quality. Under the monitors as well, tucked behind them are my speakers that I use to plug into my computer. Uh, they are Logitech speakers, I'll link them specifically as well down in the description below. I don't really use these as actual speakers as, as so as many would use, I use them more so as an interface kind of device between uh, my computer and my headphones. While we're talking about audio, let's talk about my headphones. The headphones that I'm using right now are the Audio-Technica ATH M50Xs and they are beautiful headphones. Recently I had to replace the ear pads on them however because they the ear pads were wearing uh, down unfortunately because they were a little old um, and I use them a lot. But with the replacement ear pads they're absolutely beautiful and fantastic and I think these replacement ones are gonna last me a little while. Now the set of headphones I also do use is the Alienware 510H. I love both sets of headphones and I swap between them from time to time depending on what I'm feeling like you know on the day <laughs> while we're talking about audio let's continue to talk about audio and talk about the mixer on my desk and that is the go xlr for those who don't understand exactly what a mixer is a mixer is an audio interface which i have my microphone plugged into uh to take my xlr audio and convert it into a usb source into my computer that allows me to hold control of all my audio maximize the volume of it turn down the volume of it and man manage the volume of the computer and music and anything of the sort I can make special sound effects with it, I can, you know, change my voice with it, I can record sound effects on the go, I can censor myself with a sensor reap, and so many cool other things. But the greatest thing about the Go XLR is that it gives you a fully integrated software mixer thing to where you can design the sound of your microphone and curate how it sounds. The Go XLR mixer interface on the computer is fantastic. It's a little buggy at times, but it's, that's, you know, unfortunately that's the way of the world. And I've taken a lot of time out of my life to try and you know devote myself to audio because I always believe that audio is a very important element of your streams and your videos uh, that you're creating and that audio matters probably paramount to probably everything else if I, if I say so myself. I've spent a lot of time curating my audio and how it sounds and now I've got my audio to a point where I'm actually praised for my audio quality in my streams and in my chat and how actually fantastic my audio sounds, which is fantastic because I've invested this time and money into this equipment. So it does indeed sound fantastic. Well, we're talking about uh, mixers and microphones and stuff. Let's talk about my microphone. Right now I'm using the Audio-Technica AT2030 five cardio condenser microphone it's an xlr connection as i mentioned which is an xlr connection into my uh go xlr so i don't have to worry about you know the connection into my computer the go xlr does the connection transplant for me it's a fantastic microphone and it's one that's praised everywhere in the industry for its sound quality and it's just tremendous you know ability to process sound right now i'm using it with the uh, shock mount that you can buy through audio technica and i'm using it with a uh, windscreen pop filter uh, that you can buy on amazon you can use it with or without a pop filter but i elect to use it with a pop filter because sounds such as your pops and your p your s your h anything like that are gonna make a pop noise without using that now you can cur curate your audio within your mixers and stuff so it doesn't do and pick those kinds of things up but I always will recommend a pop filter of some degree on your microphone. This microphone's been a part of my setup for a very long time and I honestly I don't see myself upgrading my microphone at any point in time in the near future. There's only one microphone that I think uh, is a potential competitor to this and I don't even know if it is a competitor to this and it's the Shure SM7B because I hear mixed reviews about this being better and the Shure being better so I'm going to stick with what I've got and what I know works. While we're on the desk, we can't obviously avoid the mouse and the keyboard. Mouse and the keyboard are obviously a very important part in a computer and gaming setup. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of uh, mouse and keyboard combinations over the years, starting with cheap, you know, I, Officeworks keyboards to $10 ones on Amazon to what I've got today. So, uh, also, I've done a video on my mouse and keyboard already up uh, in the card and down in the description below, so check that out. But right now I'm using the Alienware AW510K and the AW610M uh, gaming mouse and gaming keyboard. And like I say in that video, these are my favorite peripherals that I've had the chance to use. I've used a lot of peripherals in my time and these are by far my favorite. The keyboard is small, compact, but big enough to get the job done. It's got everything you need on the keyboard with the mouse being very ergonomically friendly with uh, an ergonomic hand 
grip and rest station and beautifully designed. The RGB on it is absolutely fantastic and I just love everything about these peripherals. And of course underneath the mouse and the keyboard is my mouse pad and it is a RGB gaming mouse pad. I don't specifically remember the brand but I will link something in the description to it specifically. <laughs> it's an RGB gaming mouse pad to where you can change the color of it. Right now I have it set on a purpley kind of color. You can rotate it to where it does rainbows, to just blue, green, red, etc. And it's a really beautiful thing. Also on the desk is my stream decks. Um, um, now, it's not something you normally hear decks with an S. It's not at all something you ever hear. Uh, the Stream Deck was a recent upgrade. If you remember in my last video that I did in the streaming setup for 2020, I had uh, the 15 key Stream Deck originally last year. Uh, but over Christmas, in the post-Christmas sales, I managed to snag uh, the 32 key XL Stream Deck for a about 45, 50% off, something around that point, and I couldn't resist it, and it was the only one left in stock, so I'm glad I grabbed it. As you can probably tell, I haven't filled up all the buttons yet. I've only had it for about two weeks, so, but it will get filled over time, and it's a fantastic thing. Stream Deck really makes my life as a streamer a lot better and a lot easier to where I can easily do things without having to bind things in my OBS or on my computer to my keyboard. And underneath the mouse pad, of course, is my actual desk. We need to talk about my actual desk. So the desk uh, is a two-part piece. It is a frame and then a separate top as well to go with it. So the frame was bought separately because it's a, a movement frame with a standing desk uh, component to it to uplift. Uh, and the top was bought separately and built on top of the mechanism. I did have a gloss uh, black desk prior to this video. Uh, in my last setup video, you would have seen it. Uh, my biggest complaint with that was that it got very dirty. It was very easy to leave streaks on. It was very easy to see dust on, and it was just really hard to keep clean. And there was a lot of black in this room, so I felt that I needed a change for color to bring some other, you know, elements in here. And I think the natural wood vibe kind of really does a great job of really uplifting the mood of this room as well. Obviously I mentioned it's a standing desk so I have a mechanism on the side of my desk here to where I can press a button and it will uplift uh, allowing me to use my desk while standing up. In combination with this I have a ergonomic fatigue mat uh, at my feet uh, to which I can stand on and stream and game on while I am live uh, preventing my feet and legs from fatiguing while I am streaming or gaming or working even. The standing desk was a fantastic investment. Uh, I really have enjoyed using this standing desk. It really gives me a chance to break away from constantly sitting down all the time to not sitting down all the time to, you know, actually standing up, getting some work done and, you know, not feeling like I'm doing a bad thing by sitting at my desk all day, but I'm standing at my desk all day instead. Well, we're talking about ergonomics. Let's talk about my chair. Now, previously I've had two chairs in the last 12 months or sorry, three actually. Uh, in the setup video that I did, I had had the DX Racer King series in white. Uh, that was the chair that I had for that video. And that was about four or five years old by the time I made that video. So it was on its last kind of legs, but it still is surviving today. I still use it occasionally. And then in June uh, or July, uh, I received a new chair uh, from Vertigear uh, and St. Jude uh, for fundraising for them. And I love that chair very much. It's got a special place in my heart. Uh, I love them very much for sending me that. It's custom embroidered with the St. Jude Play Live logo because of our community's fundraising efforts in 2020, raising over $5,000 for them. But obviously, as you can probably tell <clears throat> I'm not in a gaming chair at the moment I'm in an office chair in fact an ergonomic office chair in a Herman Miller more specifically I'm using the Herman Miller Aeron size C chair in graphite uh, the double graphite combination more specifically this was a recent addition into my setup in only December of last year. And I can tell you right now, albeit expensive, it was a very, very much worthwhile decision and purchase to do so because my back and my ass is thanking me very much so. Unlike in a gaming chair, I feel that my back is supported. I feel very comfortable when I sit in this chair. I don't feel uncomfortable when I sit in this chair for prolonged periods of time. Uh, it is designed as an office task chair to where you're sitting up straight all the time. You're not slouching. 
and getting the task done that you have at hand. They're warranted for years and years and years and I'm very happy with my purchase. However, the only gripe with it is that the headrest that you see behind me here that I'm sitting on uh, doesn't actually come with the chair and you need to buy it on Amazon or a third party separately. So you only get up to here with the chair when you buy it, uh, but you have to buy the headrest uh, optionally. But not everybody requires the headrest because they're not all tall freaking giants like I am. Apparently I'm gigantic. Another very important element of my streaming setup is my camera. And the camera is a fantastic thing. I'm not using a webcam, as you can tell, I'm using a full uh, pro-grade camera in the Sony A5100 DSLR mirrorless camera. Now the lens that you see on the camera is not the stock lens that comes when you buy the camera outright. Uh, you can buy the body separately or you can buy the body and lens combo with the kit lens and that's what I did originally when I bought the camera in November of 2019 or thereabouts and in the last setup video that I did I had the kit lens on it. But in about August or September of last year I made the decision that I wanted to upgrade my lens and really upgrade my quality and take it to another level that is when I upgraded from the default kit lens to the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens. It is a fantastic lens that really does a tremendous job uh, of getting all of the colors in my background and it is wide enough angle to see everything in my room and to get it beautifully in picture and in focus as well. Obviously, as you probably could probably tell, I pride myself on my background and my room display that I have here uh, for my stream and you know my general life. And I like to have a camera that also reflects that as well. I use it on the f1.4 aperture setting at the moment. I used it originally on the 1.7 because I thought 1.4 was a bit too much. Uh, but then with the tweaking of using manual focus on it, I'm more comfortable now to use uh, f1.4 which gives me a very nice blurry background with a just tremendous quality camera and of course you can't just use a camera obviously I mean you can but I'm pedantic. We've got to talk about my lighting arrangement for my stream. At the moment, I'm using two Elgato Gaming key lights, one on my left side of my face and one on the right side of my face. The one on the left side of my face is brighter uh, than the one on the right side of my face uh, to kind of counterbalance and to the one that is more so on my face than the other to give me a more definitive shine and stand out from my background. Because you can have fantastic lighting and all and that is great, but if you don't stand out from your background everything's gonna blend and blur together and that's not really what you want so having one key light on brighter I believe I have one at 25 and one at 15 percent uh, gives me that ability that it's not on too high to where it's hard to stare at for super long periods of times but also gives me that flexibility to where I'm able to be seen by my camera and I stand out from my background just, just enough and it looks fantastic quality. In my camera I do use some color correction is about all within OBS. I don't use anything else uh, on my camera when I'm streaming. I should also mention that my camera is mounted on the Elgato multi-mount with the flex arm kit enabled as well. Uh, that was again another recent addition to my setup and it's a very very good addition to my setup. I very much so like having uh, this this really fantastic uh, arm that is totally flexible because obviously I could have a tripod there but then I'm wasting a tripod behind my desk. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I'd be taking you guys through my back wall of my room, showing you guys all the cool items. We're going to give a quick overview. I can't go through each and every single item, otherwise I'd be here for hours. As a nerd and a bit of a geek and someone who's into a lot of pop culture, it was very natural of me to want to personalize my room and my streaming space with as much pop culture and nerdy geeky things as I possibly could find that suited the room. You can find everything from stuffed pillows of Twitch to an Elder Scrolls Griffin, to Clark Griswold from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. You can find my consoles on the side alley, of course, that I like to call Console Alley. It doesn't have as many consoles anymore. But obviously the main focus of my back wall is the major cabinet and the nano leaves. Inside of the cabinet, you've got all of my pop culture items and such, such as my pop vinyls. And then to the side, of course, you've got both of my nano leaves, one on the left and one on the right. I always wanted to create a space that felt comfortable, that had 
had a lot of color that was really vibrant and I feel that I've really done a fantastic job of achieving just that. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun putting this together, filming it, you know, getting all my creative juices out and filming and recording all the bits and stuff. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to do all sorts of kinds of content in 2021 to do with gaming setups, to do with tech, all sorts of things. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. All products and things of that nature will be linked in the description below. Be more than happy to answer any questions that you have, uh, but please do check out the links in the description to see if you can find it that way. But again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you really truly enjoyed this video uh, and uh, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your time zone and uh, until next time, bye bye